This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And the opening half hour of the show is brought to you by our great friends at Purdy Insurance. Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto Home Life Business Boat Motorcycle RV. They'll take care of whatever your insurance needs are. They'll do everything they can to save you money. All at Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. We get right out of the gate with the outstanding Rich Scarcella, Reading Eagle. And, Rich, always a pleasure. Great to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Steve. It was great to see you on Saturday, by the way. I know I didn't really get a chance to talk to you that much. You, you and Wogan Rich were deeply entwined <laughs> there, so... Yeah, we were, unfortunately. But, yeah, good to talk to you now, though. Yeah, it's great to talk to you now. Uh, so, Rich, I always refer to this as Blue-White Game Over Reaction Monday. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's good, because I, I agree. <laughs> uh, but just a general observation, and maybe in part may, backed up by conversations you had with players afterward, what were your thoughts? Uh, l- let me get – I'll get to the main point. I'll back into this. The first thing is obviously um, with Nick Singleton and Kay Tron Allen not playing in the blue-white game, it was interesting to watch Quinton Martin and Cam Wallace. And, we, you know, we understand Cam Wallace has had a good spring. And to see Martin on the field for the first time in person uh, it was nice. They both had productive days. And they're competing, obviously, to be the number three running back, which which is – significant i mean it is it's not you know at the top of the list of priorities but sure um got got a chance to see our davian collins who you know i'd heard about heard a lot of good things about play at cornerback that was good same thing for aj harris and jalen kimber uh but to me um the biggest takeaway i had from the game um well there's another you know the wide receiver situation which has been talked about and talked about but the fact that Abdul Carter um, looked like a natural defensive end. Again, he's not going against first-team guys. I get it. Uh, but that quickness off the ball is something that is almost unteachable. And uh, in talking to him after the game, you know, I asked him, uh, is the door still open for you to play some linebacker? And, and he you know, was uh, very, very coy about it, uh, and I got the feeling that uh, he will be used at both positions come the fall because of how the rotation is at defensive end. They've got so many talented defensive ends. Uh, I I can see that happening, that he's going to be used at both positions in the fall. I don't know that for a fact. That's just my take after talking to him. And I would say this, and it was something Jack and I brought up in the broadcast on our side on uh, Saturday, and we talked about the fact that, that as a defensive end, Penn State over the years has used zone blitz. Adisa Isaac ended up being really good at it. When you have a guy that's played linebacker before, now playing that spot, it's a more natural part of playing that spot, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I could see, you know, he, he was, I, I thought he did really well in coverage last year. I really do. Um, yeah, me too. You know, when he dropped in the pass coverage. And, yeah, I could see that, and it makes it easier. It makes it natural. Um, but I can see situations, Steve, where it's third and two or fourth and one or whatever, and Tom Allen wants to put three linebackers on the field to stop the run and, and move him, you know, to linebacker for that down and, and bring somebody else in up front. Right. I mean, I could see that. I mean, he's – you know, I, I was looking over my notes from an interview I did with Manny Diaz last year, and he went on and on about how versatile Abdul Carter is, and he mentioned 
what he did, what Manny's defense did in 22 with Tick Brown and about yeah. moving him around and being in different places. Now, I don't, I haven't had a chance to talk to Tom Allen one on one, but I can see that. I could see them using Abdul Quarter that way. And I, and I brought up in my call in that in the uh, print edition today, um, I remember that Brent Pry designed the whole his defense in 2020 around Michael Parsons for good reasons. You know, and then of course we know what happened. Michael opted out because of COVID, and but 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 to use him in multiple ways, and and, and I could see Tom Allen doing that again. I don't know that's going to happen, but I certainly can see that. Yeah, uh, there'll be a lot made, of course, the quarterbacks. Um, mm-hmm. If we if if the if the stadium were on the coast, they would have been referring to the winds as gale force uh, <laughs> on Saturday. I mean, just in general. Not just your thoughts, but the conversations afterward about them, because the conversations afterward deal with the other 14 practices. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, things that I've heard, and you, you obviously, you, you've you seen some, seen at least some practices. I, I have not seen more than, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes uh, in person. But I know that in the Bowl Bowl had a good spring. That's what I've been hearing i've been told that and i and, and i heard drew drew's had a, a good spring um and i i don't i just don't put a lot of stock into like a scrimmage like that you know like there's certain like you know and again the weather was just awful i mean the sun was out and that's about all you can say positively yeah um i was out in the parking lot before the game and i couldn't believe how much the wind was gusting and and honestly, you can't really draw much from that, you know, like what would happen. Um, but I, I, I think the other thing, Steve, is, as you know, um, that offense was as vanilla as <laughs> as yeah. as, it, as it can be. Yeah. And you know, Andy Kotelnicki, uh, who I talked to almost two weeks ago now. I mean, we know he's, there's going to be a lot of motion. There's going to be a lot of shifts, a lot of pre-snap movement. There was none of that on Saturday. None. You know, and for good reason. I understand why. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's hard to draw. I just – I think the fact that Drew Auer and Bo Prabula and the only receiver I spoke to after the Blue White game Saturday, Caden Saunders, their eyes lit up when you asked about the offense, the new offense, and about Andy Kotelnicki. And that tells – that says a lot. Yeah. I mean, because that what's interesting about that is, I think idealistically in a practice, let's just say it's a five minute period. There's 17 reps in the period. James Franklin is the coach. One way or the other, wants it to be nine eight. Mm-hmm. And for him, during the course of the spring, the defense won its fair share of reps. The offense mm-hmm. won its fair share of reps, and I think you come out of it when that happens. You do feel better about what you're seeing out there, because that's what the game. It, it, that doesn't happen in the blue white game, right? Right. I. I mean, you. You and I have seen. I can't even imagine combined how many blue white games, oh. and I. I have never. I never cease to amaze yeah. how fans, other people just draw conclusions from a two hour scrimmage. It just it just blows my mind. And I've and I've seen it repeatedly over the last thirty five years and it 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 I'm just surprised I'm still surprised by, yep. by that today that people draw, are drawing conclusions about things. Um so I, I you know, you take it with a grain of salt, you, you know, what you see, okay, you know, this, this and that. You know, I, I, me being from Reading, I was actually I spent a lot of time watching Javen Williams yes. because he's from our area, and I wanted to see him live. Mm-hmm. He did okay. I mean, he was going against Jamil Lyons, who we know yeah. has an unbelievable burst, and you know that's what I wanted to watch. Like, okay, that you can, you know, you can see things, um, but really, other than that, there's you know, other than things that I've already mentioned. You really can't draw m- many conclusions um, from what happened Saturday. Well, yeah, Javon Williams and Jamel Lyons had some interesting confrontations during the course of the. Yes, they, they faced did. off each other a lot during the course of the spring. Uh, yes, 
and you and I have probably seen a combined, maybe better than 90 of these combined. I mean, I've seen uh, close to 40, you know, when I was, uh, including when I was in school. I, yeah, you know. Yes. Okay, <laughs> and I'm, I'm up to 45. Uh huh. You know, look, and. I'm trying to think how many of these things I broadcast, 26 or 27 oh of them, gosh. whatever. Um, but I will give, I'll lend this perspective. I understand people drawing conclusions from it, and that's why you and I come on and talk about it, to give some mm-hmm. perspective and context to it, because that's the only exposure they have. True. Right? That's a good it's, point. That's right? a good point, Steve. Yeah. yeah. It's, the only, it's the only thing they see. And as I tell people, I said, yeah, I saw the other 14 practices. Okay. Yeah. So it, it gives you a bit like, so I can at least, and you can obviously give some context to yeah. what's going I w- on. I wish I could see as many practices as you and yeah. for longer, but obviously that that's not going to happen. And I, I understand, you know, what, what, what can I do? But um, the point is, you're right. It's, you're right. Fans see it. And I don't know how many people are watching on TV. You know, obviously it wasn't a great crowd size-wise, but and it was because of the weather, and I understand that. Um, but you, <laughs> you're right; it's it's their opportunity to see yeah. some of these players. It was my first my first opportunity to see some of these guys live. You know, other than ten minutes of practice. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, 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 like I said, I think. The big question going forward here now is about the wide receivers. Sure. Are they good enough? You know, and I obviously asked James that question after um, the Blue White game, and he, you know, he said they are. Drew Aller said they are. You know, the receivers in the room said, you know, we're we're ready to go forward here. Uh, you know, nobody, of co- you know, mentioning, you know, Keandre Lambert Smith's expected transfer. Um, so that's going to be interesting to follow here as the portal opens. You know, does Penn State? pursue anybody in the portal i don't know you know yeah. or you know do, can they can they attract somebody out of the portal i don't know only time will tell and the portal by the way will open up officially tomorrow correct uh, and it, you know and james i i'm going to guess that when it was brought up he, he mentioned i probably used the words honest conversations would that be correct he mentioned that he mentioned that in, in response to another question yes yeah and and that's what it comes down to. The players give yeah. give their feedback. The position coach in, inserts their feedback. Then they meet with James. They go from there. That's 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 the process uh, yeah. moving forward uh, for right. them. And that's look. That's the way it is. What is this? Will be a philosophy question here. Okay. <laughs> what, what is more interesting to you now? Is it the games? Or is it the uh, off season with all the movement? Oh man, that's a great question, Steve. Um, the games to me are still number one, mm-hmm. but obviously everything else that has changed in college football over the last five years, um, it's it's become similar to the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, even Major League Baseball with the player movements. And, yeah, I mean, we we, we could spend – I'm sure you've spent hours upon hours talking about this. Um, You know, the portal isn't going anywhere. That's not going to change. But but I think – I think I mentioned this last time I was with you. I I can see – Collective bargaining happening. I just think I'm that's where we're headed. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that's where we're headed to make to put some, as James Franklin and other coaches have said, to put some guardrails up around this, yeah. because you know, man, ro- roster management used to be I don't know how many months of the year. Well, now it's twelve months of the year, yeah. and every day, every day they're managing coach football division one college football coaches are managing their roster. And that means checking on their guys. Are they going? Are they staying? What do, you know, what are they, that kind of thing. And then doing their diligence by checking the portal. Yeah. 
you know, that they're doing their due diligence by doing that. So, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting. It's also tiring. <laughs> I will yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, I would think from a writer's point of view, you know, the Blue White game's over. You've been done interviews and used to do features yeah. in the past off of that, and then there was that kind of mm-hmm. lull. And yeah. probably the transfer portal takes care of the, of the lull in terms of generating stories. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm spitballing yeah. here. Right. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. right now, honestly, you know, I, I'm I'm done with what I have left from the Blue White game. Um, so what I'll do over the next month or so is work on freelance stories for yeah. Town and Gowns Penn State Football Annual, yeah. and I'll work on my Penn State content for Lindy's College Football, which I've done for almost mm-hmm. three decades. That's what I usually have done this yeah. time of the year, but I also now have to keep an eye on the portal. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So what are your deadlines on each one of those, on Town and Gown and Lindy's? Oh, gosh. Where, where, well, where, Lindy's, you're, where you're yeah. able to get in as much of the latest information as possible? Well, Town and Gown is later than Lindy's. Like, yeah. um, we could go now probably sometime in June with that. Um, and I don't want to speak for our editor, who I, Mark Brackenberry, who does a terrific job. Um, but Lindy, usually, and I haven't heard from them yet, but this is typical, they want the stuff by the first week of May. And the national edition, they want that, like, that's the first thing they want. So sometimes they've wanted that before the end of April. Okay. And other times then you know the the big 10 edition of lindy's it's a little later maybe a week or two weeks later you know yeah. usually by may by may 10th i have to have all that done right yeah. so you don't have um, all yeah you don't have right. all the player movements in there no you don't right no. right and again for me it, it's an easy call i have so much fun broadcasting a game the games are exponentially not even close for me, but that's because right. of the job I have. I mean, look, I've got the candy yeah. store jobs, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, but I no, I I I the, I I'm the, the two things that I that the, the reason why I'm still doing this is one, the games. Yeah, I love. I mean, I love writing. I mean, that it could be about anything in sports, but the games. Those Saturdays are, you know, most Saturdays anyway are spread. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes we'll, they'll be playing on Thursday or Friday. But Saturdays are special. They're, that's a spe- I, I, I love that. And secondly, and I don't know if we've ever talked about this, is the people on the Penn State football beat. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I, they're, you know, they're some of my best friends. Yep. Really good people. Um, I don't want to. I'm not going to go down and mention names because, sure. I, you know, I don't. I don't want to forget anybody. But I. You know, since I started uh, for the Reading Eagle in 1989 covering Penn State, um, the camaraderie on the beat has been terrific. And you know, there are people we've lost, as you know, over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, they're you know Jerry Keller in particular. He was my best friend, and and there are other people. But and and I, you know, they're to see them like Saturday. That was the only. That was great seeing everybody Saturday. I didn't, yeah, you know, and then uh, you know seeing everybody during the course of the season. That's very special to me. And just so, and I've mentioned, I don't know how many times I've mentioned on the show what an awesome group that happens to be because it is. I mean, it really is, which is I'm, great. I am, yeah. I, you know what? Thank you, Steve. But I, I am very proud of the work that the people who cover this team put out. Yes, and. I know many have been recognized in writing contests, and I think, you know, I've heard people out who wouldn't know scoff at the people who cover Penn State um, for various reasons, I'll just say. And I would defend any the, the, the integrity of this group. Uh, I would defend it against anybody. Yeah, I agree with that completely. 
completely agree with that, and I've said that before on the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't I don't hesitate to say that because I I know it's, I know for a fact it's true. Yeah. All right, hey Rich, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. I know you jumped in late, and that was really cool. But that's the kind of guy you are. Anytime, Steve. You know that. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Rich. Rich Scarcella, Reading Eagle. Brilliant work as always. All right, we'll come back. All right, this half hour brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street and Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I. I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodel waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections? Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the... Mm -hmm. Out of auto repair.